This is the Truth Network. Hidden treasures of the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Oh, in this Dasamic verse of the fourth chapter of the Song of Songs, the 15th verse, and oh my goodness, did God connect a bunch of dots for me <laughs> in what all this verse has to say. So spectacular, amazing stuff. Verse 15 reads in English, a fountain of gardens, a well of living waters, and a stream from Lebanon. Of course, we still have Jesus or the king here describing his bride, which is the church, which is us. And again, you can see all the amounts of water. You can't help but think about the woman and the well, and you can't help but think about what Jesus said in the beginning of Revelation about the fountains. And so here we are, like all kinds of water. And you may know that in the um, Jewish faith, they certainly believe that when you talk about water, you're talking about Torah. You're talking about Jesus. And he, he said he's the living water. And so, I mean, it makes perfect sense that this is flowing out of his church in so many different ways. And so as you begin to just pin these down, as obviously I had a chance to really meditate on this and, and really think about it, it just really took my breath when I realized the different roots of the words that are for streams and wells and, and uh, fountains. And so, you know, as he begins, you know, a garden <laughs> of fountains, that idea of a garden, meaning, you know, this unbelievable provision of faith. And the word fountain in um, Hebrew has the same root. In fact, it's exactly the same word as the robe that Aaron wore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's beyond cool, I think, that you can see that this fountain of teaching, right, comes from Aaron's robe. I mean, it's just a really cool thing. I mean, it is exactly the same word. It's translated fountain here. It's translated uh, the robe of Aaron in other places. And it's just really neat that it would mean the same thing. Of course, as we look at the at break down the Hebrew of the word fountain, which is a mem, which obviously is, is always connected to the Messiah and Jesus and the Torah water. And then uh, ayin, which would be the mem servant, obviously, um, or maybe it shouldn't say obviously, but the ion always has to do with being yoked and being a servant, and then a yud, and then a lamed, and that lamed, of course, being this teacher, and of course, the people that wear that robe, and so you can't help but see the connection of the fountain being teachers and preachers, okay? <laughs> and I mean, it's pretty amazing when you when you really see that connection, and then he says, a well right, of living waters. And it's really cool that he, he doesn't just say water, he says waters. And, and so you get this idea of a whole bunch of living waters. You know, obviously you have the woman at the well, but, you know, really, really cool when you look at the, uh, essentially the uh, root word of the word well, it has the same root as the word, root of the word to declare or to make clear, you know, to somewhat to engrave. So you get this idea that, I mean, really, this here we are making clear water, right? You're, you're declaring something. Well, I think you're declaring the gospel, right? And living water obviously would be the gospel that would bring life to oh so many people. And so uh, to me, the second group that are described here are the evangelists, the people that are out there that are sharing the gospel, right? Because you're going to make clear the word. And so really cool. So you got this idea of obviously the preachers and teachers, and now you got this idea of evangelists. And then there's the last one, which is really fascinating to me. And that is a stream that. Uh, is coming down from Lebanon. So beautifully to me, unbelievably really, the word stream in Hebrew, the root word of the word stream is that of a Nazarite, okay? It is exact, it's a nun and a Zion. And the idea of when you hear that Naz, that, that's the word stream in the same thing in Hebrew. And so here we have someone who's set apart, right, for uh, a special mission, <laughs> A Nazarite would be like John the Baptist or obviously Samson or even Samuel. They were all Nazarites. But here we got 
this this word stream ends in a lamed rather than a resh, like the word Nazarite. And you can hear the R in a Nazarite. But in this word, you have a, a lamed. So you have the nun and you have the um, Zion, which is this great faith plow, okay? Here you have this great faith plow, and it's doing what? It's teaching. And so you have this idea of someone who's like a Nazarite, but they're set aside as a stream plowing through the word, right? And, they're, and they've got waters coming down out of Lebanon. Well, what connected all the dots for me in this verse is when I thought about, well, the water is out of Lebanon. What is that? Well, that's the Jordan River, right? <laughs> and I looked it up, and it blew my mind to see two things. Number one, the headwaters of the Jordan River are at Mount Hermon, right? You remember on our honeymoon when we were at Mount Hermon? Well, you know, that's absolutely spectacular. So it's coming out of Lebanon, the Jordan is, and you know, it's going to go down and be the lowest elevation river in the world as it goes down to the Dead Sea. So here is this really spectacular 10,000 foot mountain where it starts, and then it goes down lower than any river on the planet. And the word Jordan, which is significant, has to do, and you can hear it because it starts with a yud. That you can hear that like Jesus. It starts with a yud, <laughs> and then you have a resh, which is like the head of servant, and then a nun, faith. So here you got this Jordan being like the head of servant faith. It's water, right? But it's it's the water that Jesus was baptized. It's in the water that that John the Baptist, right, a Nazareth Nazarite himself was baptizing people in this stream that was coming out of the mountains of Lebanon. I'm just saying, I mean, you can't miss that. They're like, that's pretty spectacular that, you know, what, what Solomon described here, you know, thousands of years before it happened, or at least a thousand years before it happened, um, John the Baptist would come and baptize people in this water coming out of Lebanon. I mean, how cool is that? This, <laughs> I mean, you can't just, you know, you really think that's cool. I, I do. And so as I begin to think about this word um, stream and these different, you know, things, what does a Nazarite look like today, right? Or a, Naz- a Nazalite, as, as the case would be here, because it, it ends with a Lamed, not with a Resh, because a Resh would be crowned. And clearly John the Baptist was crowned and Samuel was crowned. But this Nazal is somebody that that's a stream that is plowing into the word of God and they're on a special uh, mission from God. And I thought, wow, <laughs> I think I found one of my new names. So I asked God and he said, sure enough, yeah, that's right. He, he anointed me to be the Christian car guy. I have a special mission that's really only unique to me, no doubt, <laughs> that I have been given that. And I love, love, love to plow. And, and, and he's really has set me apart in so many ways to, to have – the discipline to memorize things and dig into things that were just gifts from him. People, a lot of people say, I wish I could. I don't know. You know, he just gave those things to me because of the mission I think that he had for me. And, uh, you know, the idea of the streams, they're his streams. I mean, this is his water. This is his stuff. (laughs) You know, this stuff was penned thousands of years ago and it's been there to take a look at all these all these many decades, but clearly you cannot miss that, oh my goodness, that these streams coming out of Lebanon have everything to do with the idea of a Nazarite and have everything to do with John the Baptist and and what was done in the Jordan and the whole idea of baptism, like, oh my goodness. And so you got, in, in your own sort of way, you know, this group of baptizers, so to speak. And, um, you know, it's really, really neat to see um, these three groups, and here Jesus is describing his bride as a fountain, as a well, and as a stream uh, coming out of Lebanon. I just delight in this verse, and, and I'll be thinking about it all week. <laughs> I can assure you of these streams coming out of Lebanon. What an opportunity we have to share this amazing living water. Thanks for listening. <laughs>